Welcome all of you. In the last class, we started discussing about nuclear overhazard effect. This is another interesting phenomena where you can get the correlation between two nuclear spins which are close in space. The requirement is only spatial proximity and not any J coupling. There is no need of a covalent bond between two spins. And I discussed about various factors that affect NOE, molecular motion and then alarmer frequency, pathways available for their relaxation and varieties of things we discussed and also internuclear distance everything that is the dominant factor. And of course, we, I, we introduced about dipolar relaxation and allowed possible transitions and I said if I take two couple spins. There are single quantum, double quantum, zero quantum transitions. Zero, zero quantum and double quantum are forbidden transitions in NMR, not detectable. Whereas single quantum are allowed as per NMR. But as far as the relaxation is concerned, these double quantum and zero quantum are allowed as far as relaxation is concerned, but not for detection. That is why I said NOE is not a, is, does not involve coherence it involves only polarization, population difference that is what we said. And of course, yeah, I extended further I wanted to show what is a dipolar relaxation. I showed you when they are taking an example of two spins, the spins both the orientation spins with respect to magnetic field remain same, but they can undergo tumbling in such a way one spin in creates a local field dipolar field at this side of the other and it is, a, it is an oscillating dipolar field. Of course, converse is to other spin also creates and other one. This is a dipolar relaxation phenomena when the local field created at that time will allow the spins to undergo flipping. This is a dipolar relaxation. We discussed about dipolar relaxation etc. And continuing further today, we will discuss about further about how do we get positive NYE, how do you get ne negative NYE, what are the relaxation pathways allowed, all those things we will discuss. Of course, as positive and negative anyway depends upon what is called a relaxation pathway, how the nuclear spins are undergoing relaxation. To understand that, let us take two uncoupled homonuclear spins A and X. Remember, uncoupled I have highlighted with capitals because that is the uh, important concept. There is no need of a J coupling. And I have taken a two spin system A and X, and I expect them to have a dipolar interaction in a magnetic field. That is all the condition uncoupled homonuclear spins and having a dipolar interaction. As soon as you take the sample, put it in a magnetic field, what is going to happen? This is what is called a relaxation. Uh, outside the magnetic field, the spins are all degenerate, they are randomly oriented, there is no separation of energy states, you all know. As soon as you put the sample in a magnetic field, within a short time, with within that uh, long that is called a longitudinal relaxation time. I did not discuss about longitudinal transverse relaxation times T1 and T2 in this course because that was discussed in the previous course that was not the main aim of this course and there are different relaxation like T1 and T2. The spins because if the with time within the uh, longitudinal relaxation time they start getting equally distributed among the energy levels within a short time less than are comparable to relaxation time, the spin get redistributed like this. I have taken the example of two spins, four energy states, beta, beta, alpha, beta, beta, alpha and alpha, alpha. Already we discussed this is A transition, this is A transition, X transition, X transition. Each of these two transitions I have numbered A1, A2, X1, X2 and I told you already since there is no J coupling, frequencies are identical. A will give two transitions, B will give two transitions. I have for the sake of understanding the intensity of the peaks just to identify to get the intensity of the peaks I have written certain populations here. Some of the spins here I have written some number. Why did I write that number? Because I just wanted to ensure that the population difference gives me the intensity and in a weakly coupled or two spin system which are not even coupled there are only four possible transitions two of them are equal each for each spin two of the transitions are equal. So, I want to ensure that the transitions should have identical intensities that is why I have written these are the, the possible distribution 
immediate after putting the sample in the field, magnetic field, immediately after putting. I am not even waiting for the T1 period. If you wait for the T1 period, there is a redistribution here. It is as good as you know, uh, this is what happens if you understand the NMR. You put the sample immediately, let us say your sample has a very long relaxation time. You start collecting the signal, you will not get it because you have to wait for the spins to align and the sense population redistribution should take place. Now, I am not allowing the population redistribution to take place. Immediately after putting the sample, I look at the population distribution, it is like this. Now, take the population difference and find out the intensity of the peaks A2 transition 2 minus 2 0, 2 minus 2 0, 0, 0. All the four transitions 2 A and 2 X which are equivalent have 0 intensity. This is exactly what happens as soon as they put the sample in a magnetic field. If you do not allow the spins to completely attain thermal equilibrium, then you will not get any signal. This is what happens no signal for A or X. Now, what we will do is we will wait for some time. The time is the relaxation time. That, t, that time is called T1. T1 is a time relax, like it's called longitudinal relaxation time. Is the time requ required for the spins to attain thermal equilibrium? That is the growth of magnetization along the z axis. Population gets redistributed with time because of the relaxation forces. You see the difference immediately after putting the sample is one phenomena. Now, I have waited for some time. Let us see what is the population difference. See there is some redistribution that has taken place. Now, there are 4 spins here, 2 here, 2 here and no spins, but never be under the impression there are no spins in the state here beta beta. Okay. There, is, there are spins there, but for the sake of understanding the intensity of the peaks, I have taken some number that does not mean there are no spins in the higher energy state beta beta state, there are spins. So, for calculation this is 4, this is 2, 2 and 0 is taken. I have after waiting for sufficiently long time that is T1 period. Now, let us calculate the intensity of both the peaks for A and X. A, A2 transition 2 minus 0 intensity is 2, here A2 transition 4 minus 2, 2, X 2 minus 0, 2, X1 2 minus 4 minus 0 or 4 minus 2 is 2 exactly now each x transitions 2 transitions of x 2 transitions of a both of them are equal intensity that is why we get 2 singlets 2 peaks are same frequency of overlap and each, both of them have equal intensity which is 2 2. Okay. x transition intensity is true y is 2 after thermal equilibrium after the time t 1 when you put the sample in a magnetic field. Let us see now after some time we, we know that A and X transition have equal intensities and I told you spins in the beta beta state are there only for calculation purpose it is taken as 0 never be under the, under the impression there are no spins in the beta beta states. What we will do is continuing further I will saturate transitions A 1 and A 2. I will equalize the population. What do you mean by saturation? Making the population bit of both the states equal. I will saturate transition A1 and A2. What I will do? This was the equilibrium population, right? 4, 2, 2, 0. When I equate equilibrium, uh, when I make sure that it is saturated, now these two become equal, these two become equal. This is what happens. I have saturated both A transitions. I am not touching X transition at all. X spin is remaining same, but we will calculate the intensity now. A transition has 0 intensity obviously, because spins are saturated, no signal will be there. Both, this, both are 3 minus 3, 1 minus 1 0, so no signal for A. What about X? Calculate the X, X intensity 3 minus 1 2, 3 minus 1 2. So, after some time the, what it means here is you have saturated and of one of the spins and still got 2 2 intensity. It means saturation will not alone give you any enhancement of the intensity. Let us wait for some time after saturating. 
what is going to happen you will not be continuously saturating you are saturating for some time and then take out the rf the system has to attain equilibrium it will come back to thermal equilibrium that means the saturated spin when it attains thermal equilibrium there is a population redistribution and you can again calculate the intensity now it is it is going to be when it comes back you have equal intensity again you have 2 2 2 2 2 what did what is the situation what happened now in the sense we saturated one of the spins both the transitions we saw change in the intensity is 2 after some time allow the spins to come back to thermal equilibrium still it is 2 only there is no change in the enhancement there is no change in the intensity of the signal at all that means there is no over hazard enhancement what does it imply for you saturation alone does not cause any change in the intensity or will not give rise to over hazard enhancement then why do you get what do we what do we have to do to get the envoy let us do one more trick now we will saturate at the same time we will introduce what is called cross relaxation what is cross relaxation the relaxation that occurs between two spins via dipole dipole interaction you know when we discuss about relaxation we i have discussed this at a stretch a lot of thing about in one of the previous courses the relaxation that occurs between two spins via dipole dipole interaction we will introduce now cross relaxation between two spins now in this presence of irradiation of a spin the transition probabilities have varieties of effects okay one w a transition the single quantum then there is no effect since the a transition is being irradiated w1s has no effect since the s transition is already saturated equilibrium in the presence of irradiation of a spin transition probability have different effects when i irradiate a spin transition is being irradiated there is no effect but s spin no effect since s spin transition is already at equilibrium that's okay something interesting will allow the system to relax in the presence of irradiating field using different pathways what are the different pathways the nuclear spins here we saw you know when we are attain thermal equilibrium it will start coming back like this from one this is called single quantum transition single quantum pathway spins are relaxing through single quantum pathway that's what i said here single quantum pathway only we are seeing there is no effect but what we'll do is we'll allow the spins to relax through different pathways that is double quantum pathway between alpha alpha and beta beta spins or zero quantum pathway between beta alpha and, and alpha beta states why not the spins undergo transition between these states this is a double quantum relaxation this is a zero quantum relaxation pathway what will happen now if you allow the spins to happen like that in the previous example the previous slide the spins were relaxing through single quantum pathway only to attain thermal equilibrium but we will at we will attain thermal equilibrium with a different pathway what we will do is now let us say we have saturated a spin both the a spins are saturated this is situation i saturated population difference is zero we will allow some the spins to come through not through single quantum but directly to double through double quantum pathway like this what happens i have not allowed the spins to come through single quantum then it would have been a different thing so this this would have come here this would have come here and we would have attained thermal equilibrium that is a single quantum relaxation pathway but i have chosen double quantum relaxation pathway now let us calculate the intensities of all the, both a and x spins now a transition 1 minus 0 is 1 3 4 minus 3 is 1 a transition has one intensity i'm so oh, so okay one intensity only three the x transition now x transition is 4 minus 1 3 3 minus 0 is 3 a transition is 1 whereas x transition is 3 this 
This is what happens. When I calculated, allow the spins to come through double quantum relaxation pathway. If I recalculate the intensities of A and X spin, A intensity is 1, X is 3. There is a 50 percent gain in the intensity for one of the peaks. Okay. What happened here? We saturated the 8 spin. That is what should happen. If I saturate one spin, the change in the intensity of the non irradiated spin is what is NOE, I told you in the previous class, the temperature of NOE. I am irradiating A spin, there must be change in the intensity of the X spin, and that is what happens here. I irradiated A spin, and X spin has increased the intensity by 50 percent. There is a gain in the intensity. This is a situation called positive NOE case. If the spins undergo relaxation through double quantum pathway, there is a positive enhancement of the signal intensity by nearly 50 percent and you are going to get positive NOE. Okay. Anyway, this is not the important thing we are not discussing. This is a case of positive NOE. Let us go to the other one. I continue to irradiate with the low power, wait for the spins to attain equilibrium. It will happen. It will all come back to original state where we started with 4220. Here again, all the both the X, A and X spins of equal intensity transitions 2 2 fine. So, uh, what we did here? We irradiated A spin and allowed it to come through double quantum pathway. We saw gain in the intensity for the X spin. Continue low power irradiation, allow the system to attain thermal equilibrium, then this is the spin population redistribution. Okay, that is fine. I will consider another situation. Again, I have saturated A spin, both I have made equal, but I will do one more thing now. Instead of allowing the spins to relax to double quantum pathway, why can't I allow it to relax to zero quantum pathway like this? If the spins are allowed to relax to zero quantum pathway, there is a different phenomena now. Let us now calculate the intensity. Intensity of A spin and X spin. X spin intensity is 2 minus 1 and 3 minus 2, both are intensity 1 1. So, earlier case X was 2, now it became 1. Of course, this is the irradiated spin, we will not worry. What happened to X spin? I irradiated A spin, allowed the spin to relax through zero quantum pathway, the intensity came down by 50 percent. There is a loss in the intensity. When the spins relax through double quantum pathway, there is a 50 percent gain in the intensity. This is the difference. Okay. This is a case of negative NOE. Now, you understand what is the relaxation pathway which is which are responsible for both positive and negative NOE. A double quantum pathway is the, if it is a dominant relaxation pathway in a spin system, you have a positive NOE. If the relaxation is a zero quantum pathway that is dominant, then you will have negative NOE. So, the dipolar relaxation is one of the root causes for NOE and the pathway that is available for relaxation defines whether the intensity is positive or negative or whether it is a positive NOE or negative NOE. Continue low power decoupling again at in thermal equilibrium. That is all what happened, it will come back to equilibrium. So, this is the situation what we do in an NOE, we irradiate one of the peaks and see the effect on the other spin. What happens within the system, you do not know. Spins can relax through zero quantum, double quantum, or other way. There is also single quantum relaxation, is also possible. We saw in the first one and where there was no effect on the intensity at any you know, even after irradiating and allowing it to come to equilibrium, the intensity remains same. So, double quantum and zero quantum are the only important phenomena, but W1 single quantum relaxation pathway do not create NOE. In a molecule or any spin system of your interest, if this relaxation pathway is a dominant phenomenon, that is a dominant relaxation pathway, then you will never see NOE. So, for in any given molecule or any given spin system of your interest, if you want to see NOE, the spins must relax through double quantum pathway or through sing zero quantum pathway. That is an important condition. Okay. When will it happen? When is W2 dominant, uh, dominant? When is W1, W0 dominant? If W2 is the efficient pathway for relaxation, it can happen in the case of small molecules, 
where there is a fast motion and the frequency of tumbling is larger, large frequency is there. So, this W2 relaxation pathway is dominant for small molecules which is undergoing fast motion that is where you get positive NOE all right that yields positive NOE. So, small molecules generally you know, and of course, depends upon various phenomena like well armor frequency etcetera will have a W2 relaxation pathway and give positive NOE. What happens if W0 is the efficient pathway? This is only for the large molecules like big proteins etcetera. This, these molecules cannot tumble very fast like small molecules, they are little sluggish as a consequence they undergo slow motion and small frequency will be generated as a consequence you will get negative NOE. So, W0 is if it is dominant you get negative NOE it can happen only for big molecules, large molecules, small molecules W2 is generally dominant and you get positive NOE. So, please remember these are the important sources of relaxation pathway that is for a positive and negative NOE. But in reality in a given molecule you do not know what is happening inside the nucleus. They are not I when we for the purpose of calculation I took it individually what happens like that. But in reality they are not separate they are not in exclusive processes both the phenomena are simultaneously happening one may be dominant other may be less dominant or both may not be dominant both may not be existing we do not know both may be dominant we do not know. So, there is a forces which is going on there can be a competition between both the processes not only between these two there can be competition up along with single quantum transition also that is relaxation pathway. So, all the three W1, W2, W0 are not exclusive processes there can be competition among them they are competitive processes. So, that means please remember this statement positive and negative NOE is dictated by the dominant relaxation pathway which is the relaxation pathway. So, if you know this is the dominant 0 this is positive this is dominant negative NOE that is all you have to understand all right. In summary please remember when W2 is or we are comparing only W2 and W0 W2 when it is very very la dominant large compared to W0 NOE is positive when W0 is large that is dominant NOE is negative when W2 equal to W0 there is no NOE you will not get NOE at all that dominant is W1 ok. We can even calculate NOE there is a way we can calculate NOE also how do you calculate how, what is NOE etcetera there is a process for this. How do we get the NOE percentage of NOE we have to calculate I irradiate A and get the X A spin generally A in the, usually we always say I and A spin this phenomena the terminology came because when the NOE was discovered first it was electron you know you, 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 electron that was irradiated and see the enhancement in the signal intensity. But here we are doing only with news, news nuclear spin, but still term I and S remains same does not matter. The gain in the signal intensity due to NOE is given by a famous equation called Solomon equations. It is a qualitative treatment for the phenomena of steady state NOE it is a very big disc, uh, uh, description is there and this is itself takes enormous amount of time to discuss to arrive at the equations everything. There are two books on NOE itself by Noggle and Mike Williamson two books exclusively on NOE itself imagine the vastness of this topic. So, there is uh, this discussion itself I am I do not want to go to mathematical description to arrive at everything, but this is the final expression called Solomon equation. What uh, what this will do is this one if uh, eta is always referred to as a symbol for gain in the NOE NOE factor bracket S means I am irradiating that spin I am irradiating the S spin and I want to see the gain in the intensity for I spin what happens if I irradiate S see the gain in I spin that is given by this expression W2 and W0 we already said the relaxation pathways W1 that is the transition probabilities relaxation probabilities and this in short form is written like this W 
gamma s and gamma i into this range this one this is called cross relaxation this is I will tell you this thing this is an NOE term first of all we will say this is a NOE term and this whatever the entire term given in the bracket is a NOE term and W2 minus W0 is called the cross relaxation rate constant. This is difference in double and zero quantum transition probability. The transition probability W2 and W0 if we find out the difference that is called cross relaxation rate constant. The bottom denominator what we saw is the sum of the all the three terms. This is the longitudinal dipole relaxation rate constant rho this is rho this is sigma. These are the two factors which contributes to NOE. This is the denominator, this is the this cross relaxation term is in the numerator. This is summarized and put like this as a factor like this gamma s over gamma i into sigma s over rho i s. This is the factor. Why we introduce gamma? What was the need to introduce gamma? Remember, if it is a homonucleus spin, you do not need to worry, gamma is identical. But we can also do heteronuclear NOE do between heteronuclear spins. We can get NOE between heteronuclear spins. That is the reason in which case the populations are different. For example, carbon 13 is 4 times less populate uh, difference in population is 4 times less than that of protons in a given magnetic field. So, gamma factor has to be taken into account to bring into bring in or take into account the e equilibrium population of different nuclear spins, heteronuclear spins. That is why gamma is taken into account. When I, I say I said when I take protons we do not need to worry about it. So, all we have to do deal with is sigma i s over rho i s that is all important thing cross relaxation over the longitudinal relaxation rate constant. So, w 2 minus w 0 define what is the sign of n v that is important thing. What are these the rates of w 0 2 w 1 w 0 processes? If somebody can answer the question how we if somebody asks the question what is w 2 ok we trans transition probability what are these rates what is the how fast they will undergo transition what is the rate of w 2 w 1 w 0 that depends upon another function called spectral density function given by j of omega it depends upon spectral density functions and what is that for the case of w 1 this spectral density function if you look at JW, it is identical to Larmor frequency of the spin that is undergoing flipping. That is, what is our Larmor frequency? Whatever the let us say I am recording the spectrum in 400 megahertz spectrometer, W1 is 400 megahertz. That is all. If both the spins are the same homonuclear spin, Larmor frequency around 400 only, both of them 400. That is the W1 transition probability. The frequency of W1 is nothing but the Larmor frequency. What is W0? W0 is the energy difference identical to difference between Wi minus Ws. What is Wi and Ws? Um, resonating frequency of two heteronuclear spins is what? Homo, when I am sorry not homonuclear spins if I take homonuclear spins I am dealing homonuclear spin now. When Wi and Ws same let us say proton they are two different chemical shapes resonating frequency is just difference in the chemical shift. What is that chemical shift value? It is of the order of few hertz or few kilohertz. Remember W1 is megahertz, W0 is few kilohertz or few hertz. What is W2 then? W2 is the sum of the resonating frequencies of WI and WS. What is the resonating frequency of two spins? Both are in megahertz. This is 400 megahertz, this is 400 megahertz let us say. Then what is W2? W2 become 800 megahertz. That is the difference. So W0, W1, W2 depend upon spectral density function, which in turn depends upon various factors. One W0 is depends upon Larmor frequency. W uh, W1 is Larmor frequency. W0 is the difference in the chemical shift, difference between the Larmor frequencies, and W2 is the sum of the Larmor frequency. So, these are the three factors W1 is Larmor frequency, W0 is difference in the Larmor frequency and W2 is sum of the Larmor frequency. These are the three factors which you have to consider all right. Let us say what is the spectral density function in numbers 
per proton at 400 megahertz just to give you the numbers. Of course, W 1 is 400 megahertz, W 2 is double of that some of the armor frequency is 800 megahertz, W 0 is a difference in the chemical shift few kilohertz that is all the spectral density functions the frequencies of are of this order only 3 we have to consider where I am considering to homonuclear spin systems. Then what is the spectral density you may ask me a question ok we said spectral density function everything what is the spectral density means of, of course it is a distribution of the frequencies of oscillating dipolar interaction I told you about dipolar interaction 2 spins one both of them oriented with res, in the same direct orientation with respect to magnetic field that orientation will not change but then when they undergo a tumbling motion the local field at the side of the other nuclear spin start changing that is what we saw one nuclear spin induces dipolar field at the side of the other nuclear spin that keeps changing and that is the, what are the frequencies which are going to get the distribution of the frequencies of the dipolar field oscillating dipolar field which that is created at the side of the other nuclear spin because of the tumbling motion is nothing but JW it is called the spectral density function. So, it is nothing but the distribution of frequencies of the oscillating dipolar interaction term ok. Now, to induce spin transitions molecules must tumble at the appropriate frequency to provide the fluctuating field remember this is a very important point. Let us say there is a transition has to undergo between two st energy states this has some energy of course, when we discuss about the relaxation everything in the one of the previous courses extensively I discussed this to induce the spin transition the molecule might tumble at appropriate frequency then only it should the spins will undergo transition then what is the tumbling frequency it should match with this when the tumbling frequency matches with this energy separation then spins will undergo transitions. So, this is the important thing dipolar fluctuating field should match with this energy separation and next question is where do you get this fluctuating field of course, a lot of factors are interconnected first spectral density function that is as some frequency which is related to larmor frequency and where do the spectral frequency spectral density function come it is because of the fluctuating di dipole uh, di magnetic field created because of the tumbling motion of the nuclear spins. But what does it what is the reason for fluctuating magnetic field where do you get fluctuating field electromagnetic field to generate the radio, uh, this dipolar field at the set of other nucleus that is because origin of the mag of fluctuating magnetic field in solution state it is the motion rotational motion of the molecule molecules are not staying steady they are not the spins aligned with the magnetic field, but this in turn generates magnetic field because they are undergoing fluctuation that is what we saw in the figure when the two dipoles I took the example one dipole is stationary let us say I took the example for stationary just for calculation purpose and the other one undergoing tumbling motion while creating magnetic field at, at diff, you know at, at all through that other spin it keeping both the orientation with respect to magnetic field same. So, the spins stay aligned with the external magnetic field but uh, at in turn while undergoing motion tumbling motion generate fluctuating magnetic fields that is the at the fluctuating magnet at the frequency of the rotation molecule when they are undergoing rotation. So, this is the origin of the fluctuating field and this is given by this thing Molecule, molecules can undergo tumbling fluctuation rotation fluctuation these are all the important factors. So, if the molecules were st steady let us say you take a perfectly rigid solid no motion at all neither translational or rotational motion in which case spins take enormous amount of time to relax it may not relax it may take ages to relax these fluctuating fields are dipoles that is generated because of the at the side of one spin because of the motion of the other spin causes this type of gives rise to this type of spectral density function which is responsible for relaxation. And these fluctuating fields are the pathways for the system to release energy and that causes relaxation. You understood what causes relaxation? Spectral density function, which has different frequencies. Where do this cover comes? Fluctuating density co frequencies come for this fluctuating magnetic field. How do fluctuating magnetic field comes? It is because of the molecules undergoing motion, rotational motion, tumbling motion like that. 
and these tumbling motion frequencies matches with this fluctuating uh, this rotation frequency of the molecule and th that causes flipping of the spins and this rotational correlation time is molecules when they undergo rotation this tells us about the motion of the molecule. How fast the molecules are undergoing motion? How fast they are they going fast or slow? That is defined by tau c called correlation time. I will discuss more about this since the time is getting up. I will discuss more about the correlation time everything in the next class. But right now you understand today we discussed a lot about NOE. In this class we discussed about various relaxation pathways available for the spins to relax and we discussed about the spectral density function. I said the spectral density function depends upon the uh, has different frequencies and w1, w2, w0 the spectral density function for these thing is nothing but w1 is the armor frequency, w2 is the sum of the armor frequency of the two spins, w0 the difference of the armor frequency. In a given spectrometer frequency w1 let us say 500 megahertz is 500 in the, for w2 is the 1 gigahertz whereas w0 is the difference of the chemical shapes and these fluctuating fields comes because of the rotation of the molecule which in terms generate the fluctuating field at the side of the other spin which causes spins to undergo flipping causes dipolar relaxation and all these factors if let us say in a given molecule if the fluctuating field and the frequency generated is twice the larmer frequency then w2 is dominant if it is half the larmer frequency w1 is dominant if it, if it the frequency of the fluctuating field is difference of this chemical shifts w0 then that is dominant. This is why you this is how you have to understand what happens to dipolar relaxation how they contribute for the NOE. Okay, with this I am going to stop today we will uh, continue with this relaxation time correlation time etcetera in the next class. Thank you.